My name's Rachel Aldridge, um, I'm 46 this year. I noticed that I had, um, there was blood and mucus when I went to the toilet in my stools. Um, <clears throat> you think it's going to be something innocent, you think of polyps or, you know, because I've heard of that. You never think it's, I didn't think it was going to be cancer. Um, I left it quite a few weeks, probably nearly a month, before I went to see my GP. Um, my GP examined me, um, said she could feel something that resembled bubble wrap, but she didn't know what it was. She said it could be polyps, so I still had polyps in my mind. Um, I was sent a letter um, from the JR hospital, my local hospital in Oxford, um, <clears throat> to go and have an endoscopy. Um, went to have the endoscopy and the, the professor that was watching the screen um, came up to me and rubbed my arm when I laid there and said, I'm really sorry, Rachel, you've got bowel cancer. Was sent home, sent another appointment. Um, my mum and dad came with me and we went to see the same nurse again. And I was told that it was bad news. It, it had spread to my liver. And my dad can actually remember um, the nurse saying, uh, we're going to refer you to the Churchill um, Specialist Cancer Centre. There's lots of things that they can do for you. But I can't, I can't remember any of the conversation, but my parents had to relay that to me. It was just the, the complete shock that not only did I have bowel cancer, it, 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 it spread to my liver. So I had six months of chemotherapy, worked really, really well on my liver. Um, not my primary tumour, so then we went down the road of five weeks of radiotherapy on my, on my primary tumour, which worked really, really well. Um, that was in the December of 2012, February 2013. Um, I had a scan to see how things were going. Um, I was told on the 7th of March that um, everything was growing again in my liver. Um, I don't think I asked about my primary tumour because they were more concerned about my liver and it had also spread to my lungs. I had spots on my lungs too. Um, so I was offered another key type of chemotherapy alongside um, a, bio an, a biological drug that they suggested. That was for another six months. Um, all the treatment that the chemotherapy and the biological drug had worked, but it hadn't worked enough for um, them to do ablation or um, a, a section of my liver. So um, I was told that CERTs, um, the spheres would be a possibility and they were, they were just in the process then of getting um, the go-ahead from the NHS to say that spheres would be available on the NHS. So I think I had to wait um, five, six weeks, which was, uh, you know, it was a really, really anxious time because all the time you know, um, Oh, with bowel cancer patients, you, you're looking at your CEA count all the time. I knew, you know, that's a cancer marker. It was going up. I knew it was growing. So you are really, really anxious. I think I bit a few people's heads off, I can imagine, <laughs> during that time. Um, but then I was told that I could have the spheres and we could go ahead with it. You know, I knew the whole time that my oncology doctor and the registrar and everybody at, my, uh, at the hospital that I go to, then... They would, they'll try anything to keep you alive and to pr prolong your life and give you a good quality of life. And I've got a good quality of life. <laughs> you had a good day? It's too old. Yeah. <laughs> In a week. What I'd say to other patients who were offered the, um, the first phase treatment is to have it. I know it's helped prolong my life. It shrunk everything and I've got a really good quality of life. I go to work, look after the children socialise with my friends, go to the gym three, four times a week. Everybody would worry about um, a medical procedure um, going into hospital. But it's definitely worth it. It means everything. It does. It means everything. For me to be here with my children, um, <clears throat> I'm their mum, you know, you, you, you bring them into, the, even though my children are you know, 16 to 22, they still need me. They need my advice and guidance. And, and I want to be here to, you know, to teach them about life. You know, I want to be a grandmother one day. I want to be around to, to help them.
to assist them in. You know, we all know that life, life's ha it has its ups and downs and trials and tribulations, and I want to be here to help them through it, not anybody else. They do.